The Closure One trial was just reported in the New England Journal of Medicine after many months. Closure One was a large-scale randomized trial comparing device closure with the best medical therapy in patients with a PFO who have had a stroke or a TIA of unclear etiology. The two treatment groups did not differ in terms of the reduction in the risk of stroke, TIA, or death. That's the bottom line, either individually or combined in the primary outcome measure. Not surprisingly, the closure of a PFO increased the risk of major vascular events and of atrial fibrillation. So is this the death knell of PFO closure? I think not, because there are a number of issues about this trial that makes the conclusion that we should abandon PFO closure, candidly, very premature. The 3% risk of stroke at two years in both groups was lower than anticipated, and strokes during follow-up were often attributable to a cause other than the PFO, but they were counted. Competition with off-label use of closure devices was a major problem for the trial investigators. Complete enrollment in the trial took five years, with sites recruiting an average of only two patients per year. The decision to close a PFO outside the trial was a major barrier to recruitment. Because of the slow rate of recruitment, the sample size of the trial was reduced, and it produced exactly what you would expect. The resulting 95% confidence intervals include a reduction in the primary outcome of 55% with PFO closure. Though a clinically relevant treatment effect was not apparent in the statistics of this trial, it also cannot be ruled out. The trial is simply underpowered. Patients who were enrolled may not be representative of the target population of patients with a stroke or TIA that is probably caused by a PFO. More likely than not, physicians selected those patients who were at the highest risk for occurrence to be treated outside the trial. Furthermore, the inclusion criteria were fairly broad and permitted the enrollment of patients with strokes caused by something other than a PFO. For example, a patient with a lacuna stroke could be enrolled in the trial and would not be expected to benefit from PFO closure. This may have reduced the overall event rate and the ability to detect a treatment effect. Lastly, questions about whether the device tested is the best closure device remain unanswered. Thus, the trial is seriously flawed. Nevertheless, Closure One provides the best evidence available regarding the role of PFO closure. For now, the results of the trial do not support closure of a PFO to prevent stroke in patients who have had a stroke or a TIA of unclear etiology. For these patients' current guidelines recommend antiplatelet therapy and warfarin should be considered. Other trials of device closure for patent foramen ovale are slowly moving forward. Before we completely abandon PFO closure, it seems to me that it is reasonable to complete these other trials given the remaining uncertainty. I'm Peter Block, and this is a CardiSource Heart Minute.